everyone, welcome back to the makeup chair. Today I'm going to be doing a review on this. This is the Urban Decay Reloaded Palette. So remember the original one? Yeah, it's been reloaded. So I'm going to talk you through kind of my thoughts about this palette, what I liked, what I didn't like. And also, I'm not going to do swatches. I'm going to show you guys it on my actual eye. So I feel like you can go online and find like different swatches, like really good ones and really bad ones of kind of any palette out there. But I want to show you guys kind of a couple of the looks. I do actually have it on right now, but I only have like the really natural ones. So I'll show you a few other combinations and talk a little bit about the palette in detail as well. So let's just get started. So this is what the palette looks like when you first take it out of the box. It's got a beautiful, almost satiny silk covering. Classic Urban Decay style of mixing fabric in <laughs> with makeup. Not usually a big fan of it because it does mean that it will absorb product, but it does look super beautiful. And that fabric actually runs through into the inside of the palette where you have a large mirror and then you have your eyeshadows which are set in like a really high quality plastic base, which I love, like super high quality plastic. At first glance, I loved these eyeshadows so much. On a little bit more of an inspection, I kind of got a little disappointed, mostly on just the actual texture, not the actual shadows because I love the shadows. I think they're beautiful probably notice that the outer four are slightly different in size. And this is probably because you're going to use these the most. At least I thought that I was going to use them the most, but let me explain. You have bribe. You also have blur on the other side, which can be used as a base and nice matte shade. I would have to use bribe for my skin tone. And I'm just so disappointed because it has sparkle in it, but it kind of gets away with it because it is so light and the sparkle that's added into it is so light. So you don't really notice it, but I wish that the texture had been the same as blur. You then have your Barely Baked, another slightly bigger shade. This one is a beautiful highlight, probably gonna be used time and time again. What I really like about this is that even though it's a gold, it's not too cool or too warm. It's not too dark or too light. It's gonna work on so many different skin tones. So I'm so happy that that's slightly bigger in size. On the other side, they have what I thought I was gonna use time and time again as a transition shade, but once again, they added in the sparkle. And this one actually is the worst for the amount of sparkle that's been added. The sparkle is like a soft kind of goldy kind of of sparkle it's just such a disappointment because it's such a beautiful matte shadow but full of sparkle essentially these shadows are all labeled as matte on the website but the only actual ones are these ones these ones are beautiful matte shadows super creamy super gorgeous easy to blend but then these ones even though they're beautiful and matte and just creamy just like the other one they have this added sparkle which i just found was just so unnecessary i didn't want it there and the worst one was this one so if you can't tell, I'm very disappointed. <laughs> Moving on, they also have metallic shades in here, which are beautiful, classic Urban Decay. And they also have these, which are like iridescent sparkles. These ones are gorgeous again, very classic, original Urban Decay Naked palette. Remember how they were kind of chunky? And once you work with them, they actually end up going on really beautifully. I find the best way to really get a feel for a palette is to actually apply them. So I'm gonna be using the shades that I've highlighted here as my highlight, fade, contour, mid-tone, and base. And I'm also going to add in that shade that I'm kind of disappointed in over the lid as well. We're going to start off with our base shade. We're going to apply this all over the lid. It went on a little darker than I thought it would. So I actually added in a little bit of that lighter highlighter shade just on the inner corner because I needed to kind of brighten it up. And then took my mid-tone. I applied this over and back in the crease of the eye. With a little bit of that peachy tone just as my fade shade around the edges of my mid-tone. With the disappointing shade, I applied this all over the lid. I feel so bad and I'm not one for complaining, but I love this shadow so much. I just didn't want to see the glitter. And actually you can't see it on the lid. So that's a big plus. It's kind of there when you kind of turn your head to the light, but overall you couldn't really see it. And then took my contour shade, which has red glitter in it for some reason. And I applied this on the outer edge of the eye. Once again, you couldn't see the glitter, which was a big plus. I was so relieved. And then took barely baked and I was going to actually cut my crease. And then I thought, you know what? Let's see how pigmented this is. So I applied I applied this with a damp brush and I kind of like cut the crease with it and then used the not so disappointing disappointing shade just to blur the two of the lines together and taking that highlighter shade then I just applied this underneath my brows and a little bit on that inner corner as well. Overall I really ended up loving this look. I was really surprised because the colors swatched a little differently and the texture was a little different and you can't really see that sparkle so pretty happy with that. Next up, I'm gonna use the pink tones. So I've labeled these as my highlight, mid-tone, lid, and contour. We're gonna start off with our base again though. I'm gonna be using Bribe as my base. Just apply this all over the lid. I've already prepped with concealer. And we're gonna start off with our mid-tone and blend this over and back in the crease of the eye and slightly onto the lid as well. 
This went on so beautifully, it was really easy to blend. I loved the pigmentation from this peachy tone. I then took the contour shade, which is the darkest of the kind of pinky tones, and I just applied this on the outer edge of the eye and also on the inner corner as well. And already this look just took so much shape because these colors work beautifully together. I then took my lid shade and it actually wasn't that different. So what I had to do was cut the crease and then apply the lid shade over the top because these two shades, which I was using as my contour and my lid were a little bit too similar to really create that kind of spotlight look. So by applying a little bit of concealer underneath, you're gonna get a slightly different tone. And then I took Angel Fire and just applied this on the inner corner. Angel Fire is very sheer, but over the top of Burn, it went on really nicely. It's almost like a pressed glitter in a way. Then I took Bribe and just applied this underneath the brows. Then I went back in with Angel Fire because I loved it so much. I just applied this around the edges of my cut crease and this sort of just brightened up the look, add a little bit of shine and glitter. I actually wanna do another look using Angel Fire because I loved it so much. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I don't usually use these kind of pinky peachy tones, but I loved it. Really easy to use. The combinations are perfect together. Gorgeous, give it a try. Now we're going to do the brown tone. So I've got my contour, highlight, lid, and midtone. We're going to start off, first of all, with our midtone shade and apply this in the crease of the eye. This went on beautifully and easily, and this is what I would use as my midtone or transition shade. It's such a shame because I feel like if they had switched these two around, I would have got a little bit more of that transition shade, a little bit more product. I'm then going to take my contour shade and apply this all over the lid. If you haven't seen already, I did a video on how to create a smoky eye, so it's basically that same technique. I then took my lid shade and just applied this over the top of the contour shade. Beautiful, so beautiful. Even at this point, I was like, wow, these are going on like a dream. I then took the highlighter shade. So this is basically like a pressed 3D glitter, I think it's referred to as. And basically it needs a little bit of work because it's kind of chunky. I tried a few different brushes, but my fingertips are probably the best way to apply this because you kind of almost need to work this in, if that makes sense. And then added black liner to the lower waterline. I used our lid shade, just running this underneath. And this look turned out really well. I only did it in like two minutes. Really easy to do. Perfect if you're in a rush. That perfect kind of bronzy, smoky eye. I loved it. My overall review of this palette, I like it. I don't love it. I feel like there's other Urban Decay palettes that I love way more than this, but I feel like it's, it's a throwback. And I, sometimes I feel like we need throwbacks just to kind of make us feel Make us feel calm inside. I feel like that's why everything is being like reloaded or redone and, and rebooted. I feel like we just kind of needed this, this, which is like the main one in the beauty industry that we needed to be reloaded. So let me know what you guys think of it. If you love it, you hate it. I'd love to hear from you guys. Why do you love it? Why do you hate it? Definitely let me know in the comment section. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and I will see you guys in the next one. Oh, it's like when you meet your friend who you haven't seen since college. Not that I had the original one, to be fair. So I really didn't like the original one at all. Oh, it's taking a picture. Hi!